Hi, what's your name? Jacob. And how old are you, Jacob? Nine. You're nine! <laughs> Jacob! I was nine when I first discovered the universe, or actually, the universe discovered me. Right? I was in a planetarium, and the, the lights went out, and the stars came out, and I was nine, and my head exploded. <laughs> Not, it didn't literally explode, my brains weren't always see. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Why don't the humans just shoot a chunk of random material at the asteroid Apophis and to either destroy it or get it out of the collision course with the Earth? I mean, why don't we just bump it out of the way, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, basically. okay. So, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here in America, he's a kid, he doesn't need to sit down, he's a kid. I'm a grown-up, I need to sit down. Here in America, we have a lot of bombs and stuff like that, and we're really good at blowing stuff up. And we're not as good at knowing where the pieces go afterwards. So suppose you go and blow it up, and here's this huge asteroid, now it breaks into two chunks. So now that map is not just a chunk burying the west coast of the United States. Now another chunk goes and hits the Atlantic Ocean and buries the east coast of the United States. Now you have to evacuate two coasts. So, yes, you want to completely destroy it? That's just harder to know how to do it effectively. So you, you nudge it. You, yeah. That yeah. comes to the second part of my question, which is, oh, okay. why don't they just shoot like a chunk of rocket? Just go, okay, this is the this is the clipboard is the asteroid, and this is the chunk of rock. And then you have a clipboard? No, <laughs> folder. No, folder. I'm just, it's cool. You carry around a clipboard. I'm just saying. Okay, this is the chunk. It just goes and it just floats off into space and hits like the sun. Okay, <laughs> okay. So here's another problem. Here's another problem. We don't really know for sure how, how strong the asteroid is in its material. So, so for, uh, what's an example? Um, let's say there was a big pile of dough on the table. Let's just, not, not money dough, I'm talking about like... Cookie like, dough. Yeah, yeah, like... like cookie dough. Cookie dough. Or, uh, be, better yet, pancake no, no, bread dough, okay? So now I want to move the dough out of the way. And I take my two fingers and I push it. What happens to my fingers? They go inside the dough. They don't push the whole dough because the dough is not... Is, the dough it's not like, is, is, is... It's, is not not, a, it's a non-Newtonian solid. It is non-Newtonian solid. <laughs> exactly. try to push it, it doesn't, it absorbs your push. So, and we think some asteroids are not solid. Y'all can just go home now, I'm having a conversation <laughs> with the kid. It's not, some asteroids we think are not actually solid, that they're piles of rubble. Well, no, we think they're piles of rubble. But how would it stay together? From its own gravity. That's the thing. So its gravity kind of holds it together as a pile of rubble. But you push over here, this rubble goes away, and this rubble stays. So we don't want to risk the future of our species thinking that the asteroid is a solid object that we can just push. Um. Now, you want to get rid of it, and I said y'all can, I'm still... <laughs> you want to push it and shove it into the sun? There are hundreds of thousands of asteroids out there. That would be a huge job pushing them into the sun. So we think we think it's easier to just keep ducking. Okay? Now I have a second. Why don't they just take a huge sheet of like metal? So yeah. If, even if it's a non-Newtonian solid, when it hits it, it'll solidify, and then the chunk of metal won't just go in, 
since it's bigger than the asteroid itself, or might be, or at least as big as, it'll take the entire thing and just push it somewhere else. So what you want is like a big, uh, a, a sweeping blanket. Yes, to, to ca exactly. Thank, thank you. I'm glad I understand what you're saying. So you want a big, you want a big, you want to sweep, out, you want to just sweep away all the bad stuff. That, I mean, maybe one day that's what we'll do. I am, I foresee a future, and you're the right age that you could lead this. Do you want to be the first trillionaire? <laughs> Figure out a way to mine asteroids. They have ingredients that are rare on Earth, but common on asteroids. Platinum, gold, iridium, all these elements that we need in our manufacturing world. You figure out how to mine them, then you know how to go in them, come out of them, move them, deflect them. Then the government said, tell me your name again. Jacob. So then the government said, hey, Jacob, that asteroid you're working on is headed towards Earth. Could you deflect it seven inches to the right? And you tell them, sure, Mr. President, and you move it seven inches to the right, or to Madam President, you move it seven inches to the, to, to the right. And so once you know how to go to asteroids, manipulate them, mine them, move material back and forth, then the solar system becomes your, your sandbox. You can move things around, and there is no longer any fear of impact. And you will not be one of these idiots who were interviewed when the asteroid was coming, saying, I'll go get drunk on the beach, because you will figure out how to save the world. Thank you, Jacob. Um, I read a book, Constellation of Philosophy. The main guy, Boethius, is condemned to death. He has everything taken from him. All he has is his reason and his sense of self. Not even that. But he attempts to console himself to this execution by reasoning that the world has order, that there is something that keeps things together. And he uses his reason to try and get to the root of why he should be at peace at death. The problem is, his source of origin is a belief in God. What would you do? Well, I, I don't know if I fully understand the question. I do know that uh, if he's about to be executed... Uh, How about you are about to be executed? Oh, I'm about to be executed. You have nothing except your knowledge and your, your knowledge of science, your experience. I would request that my body in death be buried, not cremated, so that the energy content contained within it, gets returned to the earth so that flora and fauna can dine upon it just as I have dined upon flora and fauna throughout my life. Then 
we just manufacture it? <laughs> we said, all right, good, let's go ahead and make that now. Come on back in the lab. Out comes this element. Mac is a human made element. The prefix we use to describe something made by humans is called tech. Technology is what we make as humans. That element is named technetium, which she knows. Technetium. So that's where that element came from. Don't tell me the kids don't want to hear this. <laughs> tell them that down with all the American, all those American elements at the bottom, one of them is Berkelium. Another one is like California. These are places where these elements were discovered. We have the name they write. Do you realize Americium, named after America, is the active ingredient in smoke alarms? <laughs> <laughs> Tell your kids that chlorine, if you breathe it, will kill you. That sodium explodes in a glass of water. Put them together and it's table salt. <laughs> <laughs> Congress? Wow. I, I, I checked these numbers. 57% of Senate, 38% of the House cite law as their profession. And when you look at law, law is, well, what happens in the courtroom? It doesn't go to what's right. It goes to who argues best. And there's this urge, there's the, whole, the entire profession is founded on right. who the best arguers are. Right. It's not, a courtroom is not about the truth. It's about that they, that the theory, I, I, if I get what you're saying, is that everybody, are, each side argues their version, and then the truth somehow emerges. That's the premise. However, the right. the practice, which, for example, is bred in debating teams, for example, where right. you know the subject, but you don't know what side you're going to put up, be put on to argue. Right. And so the act of arguing and not agreeing seems to be fundamental to that profession, and Congress is half that profession. And I, I, I realized this when I was a kid. I was 12, and I said, oh, I wonder what profession all these sen senators and congressmen were. Law, 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 businessman, law, law. And I said, there are no scientists. We're the engineers. Where's the rest of life represented here? And so, so when I look at the conflicts, the argumentative conflicts, I just sit back and say, you know, can I buy an engineer, please? Or sign, put somebody, a, a, business, a, a, a business person who knows how to make a hard but, uh, but, but uh, significant financial decision because at the end of the day, they got to make their, their, their books work. But, you know, I, I, I think that that is part I'm, of I'm it. Screaming, I, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I like screaming. Uh, let me try and bridge that gap a little bit. I'm going to be uh, silent. Uh, um, no, you're not. <laughs> um, but uh, th I think it's really important to point, to point out that this is a political issue. And, in fact, I, 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 me and Buzz Aldrin together testified before the House Ex Science Committee on Space Exploration. And I w I, when I said that, that humans don't do science in space, I didn't argue, in fact, even before the committee, that we shouldn't send humans into space. We should just say wh honestly why we're doing it. We're doing it for adventure. That's why we're doing it. No, that's honest, not what funded hold it. Hold on, hold on. No, that's, that's not true. So you said no, you wouldn't talk. But, I did but, say Okay, okay. You, you can say that. No, no, but it's, hold it's on. No, there's, there's no there there, okay? <laughs> there, no. Just, just, just look at the history of everybody no, no. doing big projects, and it's never driven by exploration. It's never driven by science. It's never driven by curiosity. Not if it's big and expensive. It's driven by the fact that people don't want to die. So there's a war driver. It's also driven by the fact that people want to get wealthy. So no, no, there's a hold money on. We have the large, the, the large hadron collider. The large hadron collider. The large hadron collider. Do you know? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Just proves my point. Yeah.